Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. Today on the Visionary Chronicles, we're going to talk about something that is a very large piece of being a successful company. And this goes towards branding. And this is more relevant to premium brands that rely on the brand beyond the product and the marketing beyond the product. To be a successful brand on a global level and generational in nature, you need to know about branding and understand what your brand stands for. And many times on generational brands, you're going to see that this foundation was set generations ago and really hasn't changed. Now, it's really dynamic, but it hasn't changed in regards to what the brand stands for long term. So when you look at how a brand evolves, how it's built, what was its original foundational principles, it's really something that doesn't change. And and what you'll find with whoever comes into a company needs to first understand the brand. And I thought a great quote from Steve Jobs, who obviously is one of the great minds of our generation. It's not a faith in technology. It's a faith in people. And when you read into that line, what Steve's really saying here is we can build great products, but without somebody understanding the value it provides in their day-to-day life, how to use it, And be loyal to that brand on a long-term basis that provides value and equity to a company. So within that statement, it's pretty interesting. It's not a faith in technology. It's a faith in people. And that's truly what it is. When Steve looked at developing, building products as a brand as Apple, his singular thought process was, how do I make it easier? How do I make the aesthetic beautiful that when people pick up an Apple product, they look at an Apple product, they have an affinity for an Apple product. It isn't just the product itself, it's the branding, it's the packaging, it's the delivery, it's the customer service, it's everything that wraps itself around that brand that made them successful and continue to be successful today. But if you look back as to where Apple started, it's really no different on how they position their brand. It's still premium, It still provides an experience and it's still the easiest product on the planet to use. And now it just happens to have an ecosystem that touches everyone. So I thought that's a great example of, hey, what is a brand and and what is branding exactly? And another quote from Tom Peters is, the best leaders are masters of stories and symbols and logos. So when you look at great leaders, visionaries with great brands, It's one thing to start out with a great product, but it's another thing to build a great brand that wraps itself around all components of the product and the product effectively becomes a byproduct of what the brand stands for. And when you look at leaders, they don't create followers, they create great leaders. So when you look at brands and how they get followers, they don't go in with the intention of trying to find a way to build followers. And this is really important when you look at branding, especially in the day that we're in today with digital marketing and acquisition and communities. You should look at it from the standpoint that people have an affinity for your vision and what you're doing. And as a result, you build followers. You don't go after followers. So these great brands by design have people coming to them because of how they position their brand through products and the marketing, whatever a component may be. Somebody had a great customer service experience. Somebody had a great user experience, whatever that may be, they have an affinity for that brand. So when you look at branding, great brands are built off that foundation. So what I'd like to talk about today is, you know, where do you start? You know, this kind of our principles that apply to every brand. Whether you're big or small, a lot of times big brands that I work with at Liquid Mind come to us because maybe they've lost sight of their vision. It's an interesting dichotomy when you look at it because you think vision is just sight 
it's foresight. Well, really, there's a huge difference, as we talked about before, between a vision and a visionary. Just because you can see doesn't mean you have vision. So there's a perception out there that a lot of times get out of the way if you don't have the proper vision or you're not a visionary. And let those that have that drive the company long term. So when you look at those great leaders, those visionaries, those people at the top, the ones that set the vision for the company and also the foundational principles of where that company is today or where you're starting out and want to go tomorrow. So those should really never change. We talk about those foundational principles and we know what are those. It's really defining who you are and what you do that is unique versus your competition. Because if you don't understand that, there isn't anybody inside of the company, from sales to marketing, whoever it is, that will understand it or the interpretation of how you would like them to understand it. So the core principle of branding is built off of, first and foremost, defining who you are and what you do that's unique that can not only be beyond a one-hit wonder, but could last for generations. This comes from what we talked about before in previous podcasts and talking about drawdowns, breakaway strategies. These are all things that are unique to certain brands and has carried them for generations. A lot of times, brands are defined by their products, but if you look at the foundation of what that brand was built on, a lot of times it was defining what they're trying to achieve as a result of commercializing that product. So really understanding who you are and what you do that's unique is very important because if you don't understand the vision and the foundation of what the brand was built on, nobody else will. And I will also put a caveat in there as well to say, make it simple for people to understand. Don't get complicated on your positioning. Make sure that it's easily understood, whether it's Apple, BMW, um, you look at these brands and how they positioned them. The taglines are very easy to understand, but extremely powerful and probably the hardest thing for a brand to create because it has to be very innovative, very catchy. One that most people, when they look at it, relate that to the particular brand. So the first thing when you talk about successful branding, the reason I spend time on this is because defining who you are is so important. And then what you're going to do that's unique. You know, when, when Apple started out, it was to build portable PCs and have ones that are user-friendly, that people understand. And, and this is a principle that's carried on for generations. And same thing with Nike. When you look at Nike and what Phil Knight had built as a foundation for Nike, it was to cater to an elite athlete. And he didn't necessarily care on the front end that if anybody understood the language of the Nike athlete, it was there for, their, for them to aspire to understand the language of Nike. So this was something that when you look at it was a unique positioning for Nike, Adidas, uh, any brand that we work with. Oakley was a great example as well. We were part of that bad boy club and everybody wanted to be part of it. And that was a positioning of Oakley was have breakaway, great breakaway designs that were leapfrogs, not just leapfrogs, but generations ahead of the competition. So much so where it didn't become practical to market the product beyond athletes. We just thought, wow, those are really crazy products, but it obviously built an aspirational side to Oakley that everybody wanted to be part of and part of our community. And that's what I talk about with followers is that people want to proactively be part of your brand. That, that is a sign of a great brand is that where you don't have to spend money going out, trying to acquire followers, they follow you and they reach out to you. That's the ultimate compliment as a brand is where they come to you and they proactively build your follower base. So defining who you are is so important. And then you want to create number two, create a persona around your brand. Make it a living, breathing thing. When you look at the Nike athlete, what is that athlete? Male and female. 
whatever it may be, have a persona around who you feel that Nike community is. Not that it excludes anybody. I don't want anybody to misconstrue that, but it's a persona behind the brand of attitude. It's a look, it's a feel beyond the brand and beyond the product that is a living, breathing thing that creates a culture around a brand that everybody can embrace. And what's cool about that is everybody inside of the company and outside of the company get a feel for what that brand stands for, a living, breathing thing. So creating that persona is extremely important for a brand and, and one that really relates to people that when they put the product on, there's something about the swoosh when they put it on versus another generic product and shirt that quite frankly may be the same quality, same style, same design. It's a knockoff. There's a reason Nike's on the good level and they're on the best and better level and they're on the good level. Nike will always be on the best level, but when you get generic knockoffs, that's why they're on the good level. Lower price point, but no affinity for the brand whatsoever. So it goes beyond product. You're selling a lifestyle. So have someone that you can show or a persona that reflects your lifestyle of your brand. Then third is developing a vision, a reality to this persona and bringing that persona to life in marketing, in products, in different environments. And if you're a multi-sport brand, bring that vision and that persona to life in the reality of people and athletes that are wearing your products. That's extremely important and it flows into the sports marketing side of your business. I had sports marketing at the different brands that I've been with and that was always the strategy that we had, defining your vision, who you are, creating a persona, And then bringing that vision to reality through athletes that you sponsor, but then also athletes that proactively reach back out to you knowing the persona and the type of visual imagery that you're looking for. So that's an important aspect of it as well, is making sure that that vision comes to reality. Now, number four is ingraining these things in all that you do. I don't care if it's products, culture, the processes inside of your company, the logistics, the manufacturers you work for, everyone should understand what the vision of your brand is, creating that persona and bringing that to life in the products that they're producing for you or that you're selling into the marketplace. The sales team should understand it. The marketing team in particular needs to be ingrained and their bloodlines need to flow with what that brand is all about. So ingraining this in all that you do proactively is an extremely important aspect to it as well. And number five is just being consistent, but being authentic. And I use those two because they're so mutually important. Consistency with authentication. Be true to your foundational principles as a brand. Consistency means that you've got a lot of content that you're building. And quite frankly, that's what you need as you build your follower and your community base. They want you to communicate. But make sure, do not sacrifice bad content that isn't right for the brand for good content that may take a little bit longer. The latter's better, the former's not. So making sure that you're authentic is extremely important and be consistent. Timing is third. If you got content, don't pump content out there that's not right for the brand and doesn't match your positioning or your vision. So be very careful on this digital marketing strategy. And I work with a lot of brands that just feel this need to consistently consistently pump content out. And I go, why are you pumping the content out? Is it right for your brand? If it's not right for your brand, first and foremost, it's going to degrade loyalty. And as, as a result, also your brand equity decreases. So making sure that you're consistently authentic in everything that you do, not only in product, but also in content that you post out to the different sites and the followers and community that reach out to you, being loyal to them and making sure they understand what you're messaging as a brand. And the sixth point is I've seen many brands do this and it drives me crazy, um, but they do it. And I say, don't sell out or lose authentication because that will also damage loyalty and ultimately revenue. You may have a short-term gain for long-term pain. So when you look at selling out means that you're in a channel you shouldn't be. You make a product that's at a price point where it shouldn't be. 
you go down to the good level when you should be at best level. So don't sell yourself out for short-term gain. Trust me, long-term pain will happen when, that ha- when you do that type of strategy. So you may think it look good, looks good near term, and I've seen it in almost every instance when this happens with the brands I've been associated with is that there's a panic mode that sets in. Hey, I'm not hitting my quarter. I'm not hitting my year. And it drives the marketing team crazy. But at the same time, the sales team has a job to do. So there's this balancing act. And leaders and visionaries at the top of the companies will side with the fact that, listen, we can't have short-term gain for long-term pain because now two quarters down the road, we're going to have to deal with this issue. So I say don't sell out or lose authentication. As a result, revenue deteriorates as well. And seven is stick to your positioning. When I say good, better, best, I say Nike's always at the best level. What you find on the good level is a lot of eat your own young when you look at price points. There's, if your price point is your only competitive advantage, you don't have a competitive advantage. It's easy to make a t-shirt. It's easy to make products. It's easy to knock off products. And I'm not saying there isn't successful brands that do that. But the challenge you have, and when we talk about branding, is authentication, a vision, lifestyle selling of products. And, and this is stick to your positioning, good, better, or best. If you're best, stick to it. Don't try to cr- cross that chasm across three levels. Now, there are strategies around how to achieve that on good, better, and best and still stay at best is what I talk about with previous generations, selling along that product life cycle, closing product out sooner and putting them on the back end and selling them as good. So that's always a good strategy. But always stick to your positioning. And I say, bleed and preach this vision. If you're the leader of a company, consistently bleed and preach this vision and foundational principles daily, both visually and verbally. And I say visually is that letterhead should have your positioning. Business cards should have your positioning. So whether it's sales, marketing, presentations inside of your company, continually bleed this vision of what you stand for every single day because believe me i've been with brands and worked with brands on a global level and this is one of the first things to move out of the mindset of employees as well as those inside of the company or outside the company so make sure you're preaching this as the leader of your company every day and number nine is successful brands are generational they're not one hit wonders so True brands have anchored themselves in a dynamic foundation. And I throw the word dynamic in there because I understand that you have to change. You can't stay the same for generations. But successful brands are generational. They're not one-hit wonders. And those true brands that stick to their foundational principles, stick to their vision, stick to their positioning, and don't sell out and preach Every single day inside and outside of that company, the foundational principles of what you stand for are successful. And the reason they're successful is it doesn't matter who comes into that company. They're immediately ingrained with those principles, the vision, and every single day reminded who you're working for. So stick to those principles and successful brands have proven out and pat really built the pathway for you to follow. Just stick to it. I know there will be times when you're inside of your company as we're going through right now with crises, and I'm working with many brands right now, that there's two levels of what they've hit the button on, either panic or opportunity. And I love the opportunity brands because they've taken a deep breath and said, where can we maximize this as an opportunity for our future growth? Those are the ones that you're going to see are building long-term revenue opportunities and also engaging with their community and not selling out. So make sure that whatever you do, number 10, is stick to your original vision, your original foundational principles, and stay consistently authentic in all that you do and make sure that you don't sell out. And having those things in place 
you will be a successful brand and follow the path that others have carved for you to follow. I want to thank you for listening to the Visionary Podcast today. I really appreciate your time. And I hope you enjoy the subjects that we're bringing up here with the Visionary Chronicles. It's more diversified, talked about business strategy, areas of support that you need in functional areas, but also on the personal side. There's a lot of things that you deal with as an entrepreneur, small business owner, manager, or executive. So we want to make sure we're addressing those as well. So if you like the content, I just wanted to kind of put something out there that hopefully uh, you could join or subscribe to the Visionary Podcast, or at least give us a shout out on the rating. We'd really appreciate it. Um, we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, Pandora. And for those that do give us a rating, um, we're also going to be doing some giveaways. We'll have some t-shirts, some different stickers, uh, some rings that we're giving out, some super cool rings on the Visionary side. Um, and different subjects. If you've got some subjects you would like us to talk about, you can see when I, I introduce the, the podcast each week uh, that these usually come from our listeners on a subject area of concern with them or area that they would like me to talk about. Um, and also, we're going to be starting our interviews. And if there's anybody out there, um, we've got about 10 lined up right now. We have uh, former executives from Action Sports Industry, Sporting Good Industry, Ones that you'll find very intriguing. We're going to have also some graphic designers uh, that will be joining the podcast as well. So if you've got an idea of some people we might want to interview, I'd certainly appreciate it. 